Hi. Okay. So part three of the Ginger Voice Basics Boot Camp. I'm going to piggyback off of the last video really fast. Um, so in the last video, I discussed resonance and how um, pitch is not actually the most gendering characteristic of a voice. That's resonance. That being said, um, mm, a lot of people who end up wanting to alter the gender presentation of their voice end up <laughs> working a little bit on pitch. And so while I'm not at all saying that pitch is the most gendering characteristic or even um, a mandatory one to focus on whenever doing gender perception voice work, um, it is something that I would be remiss not to at least address because it is the area that has the most common pitfalls. And in lieu of wanting to help you build a strong foundation, I wanna make sure that I'm also addressing um, some things that you may be doing that could lead to tension so we can make sure to watch out for that. All right, so <laughs> I'm gonna use these rubber bands, this rubber band here to represent my vocal folds uh, and do a quick lesson on how we physically alter pitch because a lot of the pitfalls of pitch work can be avoided by just understanding the basic science behind pitch itself and how it's altered. Okay, so when we raise our pitch, the vocal folds are stretched long and they're more taut. And when we lower our pitch, the vocal folds are compressed and they get thicker, okay? So similar to like a string on a guitar or a violin, when you tighten the string, it creates a higher pitched sound. And when you loosen it, the sound lowers. So when we alter pitch for gender voice, there's some basic pitfalls that we want to avoid. The first of those is gonna be the inclination to just start speaking at a drastically different pitch than your beginning voice or your starting baseline register. Just jumping to a new pitch can cause strain and fatigue and um, like a distortion in the tone of the voice that we want to avoid. Um, so let's unpack that a little bit. The vocal folds themselves, like I mentioned, they stress, they stress, they stretch and they compress to go up or down in pitch. But whenever we're stretching our vocal folds, the movement itself is actually happening through the engagement of the muscles responsible for stretching them. So meaning in this wonderful representation of the vocal folds, the, um, the muscles responsible for increasing pitch here aren't the vocal folds themselves, it's actually the thumbs that are stretching them. So if the work is actually happening at the level of my fingers as I stretch my rubber band or my vocal folds to raise my pitch. So when we work to expand the pitch range in that way and reach higher heights, we're actually targeting the muscles that are responsible for moving them and not the folds themselves. And we do so through a series of targeted exercise that are within reach of our baseline range. As we master that range, then we can keep expanding it until we hit either our target pitch or our limit. So what I'm saying basically is it's imperative whatever working with, with pitch, if you're going to raise or lower pitch, that you do so slowly um, and in a controlled way because just jumping to a higher... <laughs> A higher pitch can have a lot of downsides like breaking your vocal folds. <laughs> um, for instance, if the muscles that are responsible for stretching the folds aren't used to that amount of stress at the higher ranges, they're going to fatigue much quicker. Um, and the amount of effort that it takes for to keep them there will also likely um, spread the effort, that tension will spread to other structures and cross the line into like unhealthy tension. Um, and tension is the number one thing that we want to avoid and monitor for. Um, so slow and controlled pitch work is a great place to look out for it. So what does this mean for you? Um, well, I can tell you that through my experience working with a lot of people and talking about pitch as part of their gender expression, um, no two people are the same. So though some people may start out at a really similar baseline pitch, everybody has a different range. Um, and so though you're at the same baseline pitch as somebody else, you want to make sure that you're working within the current range that you have and just slowly and in a controlled manner, pushing the upper limits 
Um, and having somebody help guide you through how to do that can be super helpful. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, uh, to help tell you when it's right to keep pushing um, and just give you a range and some exercises to start out with as well. So quick review. Uh, pitches and everything, that's resonance. We know this. Uh, but for some, if not most, pitch is an area that ends up being modified or addressed in some way. So more so than focusing on what's considered masculine or feminine or androgynous pitch ranges um, culturally uh, for gender expression, we focus on instead what feels authentic for you. While doing that, we keep in mind the safest, most effective um, way to expand your range. So next month, I'll be launching my comprehensive gender voice program. I keep calling it that long name because I haven't named it yet. <laughs> it's a monthly mentorship or monthly monthly membership um, that will walk you through each step of a gender voice transition and pitch is going to be covered as part of that. It's again, optional, but it'll be in there um, just to cover everybody's needs for those who wish to address it in their voice. And so if you're interested in joining the waitlist for that program and you haven't already commented waitlist on a different gender voice basics bootcamp video, go ahead and comment waitlist below and I will send you over a link whenever enrollment opens for that at the end of August. Um, as always, if you have any questions or you uh, want to talk about what it would look like to do a private mentorship with me, feel free to reach out via direct message or you can always email me, nicole at sfspeak.com. And thanks for coming to my TED Talk.